Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros. And today we're excited because we're looking at one of the most powerful and newest mini PCs we've gotten to see yet. Mini's forum was nice enough to send over this mini PC, the Elite Mini, but it features a Ryzen 7 5700G, the latest and greatest Ryzen APU. How's it perform? Well, we're about to find out. But first, a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Patriot and their Viper VP4300 Gen 4 SSD with read speeds up to 7400 megabytes per second and write speeds up to 6800 megabytes per second, DDR4 DRAM cache, capacities up to 2 terabytes, and an included heatsink to keep your drive nice and cool under load. These SSDs are perfect for your next Gen 4 capable gaming PC and are also supported as an expansion drive for the PlayStation 5, making it an all-around great purchase. Be sure to check the link down below to learn more and special thanks again to Patriot for sponsoring today's video. So we're really excited because a lot of times when we check out these mini PCs, they have something like a U processor or an H processor, which typically means mobile. They use less power. They typically don't have the same type of core structure. Well, this here is an actual desktop 5700G. We'll actually open it up and see if it's literally a desocketable 5700G or if it's actually soldered on, but eight cores and 16 threads with the epic Vega graphics should be pretty cool. So let's go ahead, open this thing up and see what's inside. Hi there. Hey, what you got there? Well, we got a Minis Forum PC, and this one is extra schmoll. It actually feels a little bit heavier than what we're used to. Oh my gosh, it comes with a little, with oh, a little okay, dust filter. filter. So it actually comes with an instruction manual, which this, this is new. You normally don't get these PCs with instructions. So they actually call it the new gen Elite Mini Computer. But these unboxings are typically very simple because, well, there's not much to them. You typically have the computer, which we got right here, and check it out guys, it fits in my hand. Now obviously, they can only make these so small when they're actually using like desktop components, or the size of that fan for the <laughs> CPU cooler. So this is definitely one of the sleeker looking PCs I have seen in the mini form factor. To go over what we have on the outside, we have a power button, we have a combo headphone jack there that looks like a reset button right there maybe. Yeah. Uh, we have, it looks like a line in, a mic in, and an actual audio out. So we actually, you can basically do like your typical desktop setup where you can have a set of speakers and you can have your headset plugged in. We have a micro SD card reader. So you could use that to expand your storage, but this thing does have a lot of storage already. We have four USB 3s, uh, two ethernet jacks, an HDMI out and display port out, and then our DC power jack. I mean, looking pretty sweet. We have like, I mean, a lot of airflow. They really need to make sure that this thing was like honeycombed all the way around so that it doesn't overheat. Let's go ahead and open this up. A lot of times they'll include some small upgrade options. So a big power break. <laughs> yeah, this thing is, uh, I'd say it's a little power hungry. Let's see how many watts we actually have here. Um, it does include a HDMI, just a standard HDMI cable. Um, power cord that'll plug into this. It actually includes the vase amount, so you can put this in like the back of your monitor. But this is, let's see, output uh, 19 volts at 6.3 amps. This is gonna be a lot of watts. That's, uh, does it actually tell the watts or am I gonna really have to do the math? That's about 119, 120 watts. So we have a 120 watt power brick here, which isn't too crazy, but I would bet that this actually gets pretty close under full uh, load to probably hitting that. And uh, what do you think, May? I think we should open yeah, it up. Yeah, I think we should open it up. Let's open it up. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and open this up. I think it's gonna be these screws on the side, but I don't know for sure. But hey, that's the whole point, is we're, we're doing a teardown right now. So we don't really know what we're taking apart. All right, so we got four screws, two on each side. These are normally like really simple to take apart. They really don't make these like hard to upgrade for you. It's not like some laptops, you know, where it's like, you have to be a rocket scientist to open it up with these. They're pretty, they're pretty user friendly, mainly because they know people want to add storage. Um, so they often have like some storage expansion options. That's what I was a little bit confused about is normally these come with like an adapter uh, to where you can add uh, like a secondary drive. So maybe this has something already in it where you don't really need to use any type of adapter. Maybe. The real question is, did I just undo all that for nothing? Well, they normally open from the feet, but. We can try that. I mean, there is feet. I just assumed and I shouldn't have done that. Okay, this is interesting. Hopefully we can get the top off too, because um, this is like one of the few boards that really utilizes both sides like big time. So just like I was saying, we do actually have 
a two and a half inch SATA, uh, like ready to go. Literally, you just plop the drive in and then plug this in. So very simple. Here's our NVMe SSD. Um, I assume it's an NVMe because it has a big heat sink and everything. Normally, they only need this for that. There's actually a second socket here for like a shorter M.2, like a, a Wi-Fi style one. So I think you could do more storage or you could have like, you know, Bluetooth module or whatever. It actually has two sticks of RAM, 16 gigs total. Um, don't know what speed it is. I guess we're already freaking in. Fast, there's right? like there's like four screws. I don't know if I've taken all of them out. We'll check it when we get into the BIOS, but we know for sure it's DDR4. I'm gonna assume it's like 3,000 megahertz a piece. Um, let's see if we can actually. It's top just I don't know if it just drops out. Wow. All right. So what do you think? You wanna? You wanna yeah. Actually, what do we gotta? We gotta see it. This we're, is a big heat sink. We've come so do far. Do we gotta put some Arctic on it? Yeah. We'll see what kind of thermal paste spread they have. But it, I have a sh like strong feeling you're just gonna see a 5700G just sitting you right there. You think so? I think no, so. No solder. No, I have a feeling it's legit. It's legit. He says. Yeah, it looks like on this side, there's literally like it's just the APU. I don't see anything else for like adding uh, things to it. There is a second fan header, but it's proprietary. The laptop one, so probably couldn't, most people couldn't really do much with that, but I'm sure some of the enthusiasts out there could figure something out. Look and that, that thermal paste spread that's is- That's a good spread. That's pretty mean. I'm not even gonna replace that. Yeah. That's a lot of thermal paste. Uh, we do have a CMOS battery here. That's one thing that may be noting uh, because this cooler would cover that. So if you ever need to replace it, um, might be a little bit tricky, but I don't see you having to do that on a new PC anytime soon. Let's go ahead and put this back on like it never happened. Yeah, so, I mean, it looks good. Um, right now, I think we're just gonna go ahead and put this thing back together, boot it up, play some games, obviously do some, like, workstation stuff, because I see this being a good, like, office PC oh, for, yeah. like, a video editor or a graphic designer who wants to do photo work and stuff, and we don't want any, like, massive towers or anything. Um, this is a really good use case for that. Could be a really expensive home theater PC, too. Yeah, and also, for those crazy people out there, this does come with up to 64 gigs of RAM and, like, a two terabyte crazy. SSD. So if you really want something crazy, you can do that. But uh, yeah, so let's just cut to some benchmarking. All right, guys, now that we have this mini PC all booted up and ready to go, let's talk about a couple benchmarks real quick. Now, we decided to test this PC in a couple of titles, those being Call of Duty Warzone, Back for Blood, Splitgate, Borderlands 3, and we also ran Cinebench to see how the CPU performs. Now, of course, we have benchmarked the 5700G before, and it is a pretty good CPU, but again, it's still an APU, so it's not absolutely great for gaming, but with optimized settings, you can get close to 60 FPS in the latest titles, and that well actually shows in Warzone at 1080p on 60% render scale on all low settings, we averaged about 45 FPS is it playable? No, not really. If you really want to win a game of Warzone, you're probably not going to want to run on this mini PC. You could drop it down to native 720p and 100% render scale low settings, and I would imagine you probably would get close to 60 FPS, but this is another example of the 5700G being clearly bottlenecked by its Vega graphics. Fingers crossed for some new graphics on these new APUs coming from AMD. Now, Back for Blood is a fun game to test because it has AMD FSR, which is the same, well, feature that NVIDIA offers as in DLSS but for AMD graphics cards and even Nvidia graphics cards if you want to and using FSR on performance mode low settings we actually got 60 FPS in a new well triple-a quote-unquote triple-a title back for blood at 1080p there were a few dips below 60 FPS here, but it's still really cool to see that this technology allows you to have a system without a graphics card and play newer titles at 1080p, while be it it is upscaling from 720p using AMD FSR, but still at native 1080p and getting 60 FPS. Now, of course, something that these mini PCs have no problems with whatsoever is eSports titles, and in Splitgate at 1080p on medium settings, we averaged 80 plus FPS. I'm getting some comments from people saying that they're not very interested in seeing us play Splitgate anymore. If you guys have any eSports titles you want me to swap out for Splitgate, let me know down below. One reason I'm benchmarking is I kind of like to play it, and I want to really focus on eSports titles on Steam. It's much easier to download all the games on Steam than download from multiple different platforms, so let me know down below which eSports title you want, and I may pin your comment if it's good. And the last game we decided to test was Borderlands 3 on low settings at 720p. This is a AAA benchmark. We ended up getting 49 FPS. If you're okay with 30 FPS, if you're coming back from an older console, this would be an okay gaming experience, but you're in PC gaming and modern gaming nowadays is not 30 FPS. It is 60 frames, so it's not necessarily ideal for this sort of game or pretty much any other AAA title you're gonna throw at it. But one reason you might wanna pick this PC up is for content creation 
creation. This is a very compact system featuring a very powerful CPU. While the GPU is not the greatest, the CPU is very powerful. And as you can see in the Cinnamon run, getting a score of 4,873, we're beating out first gen Ryzen desktop processors by a decent amount. And it's all in this very compact box that does not need a graphics card. And that Vega 8 graphics, while they're not great for gaming, would be pretty good for accelerated render tasks. So if you're looking for something under $1,000, it's very portable and you're not somebody who's very interested in laptops because I know a lot of people really don't like working on laptops and rather have a portable workstation where they could just bring a portable monitor with them keyboard mouse and have a well little mini PC like this then it's definitely worth considering and if you're a business this might be a very good purchase for your business if you're doing things like 3d rendering a lot of heavy work and you want something that's super easy to put and set up and it's very compact and safe space so I'm really happy with this mini PC for the money. Is it for everybody? No, it is definitely very pricey for what it is. You could build a 5700G normal standalone PC for about $700, which is $300 cheaper, but you're getting a very big tower. If you want a really compact system, this is the way to go. Check the link down below if you want to pick this thing up. Let's bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick. So as you guys probably imagine, this thing games just like a 5700G would because that's really all it is, is a 5700G APU with 16 gigs of RAM running a dual channel. So really the best case scenario for these 5700G. Now, of course, for $1,000, it it's kind of pushing it a little bit for most people, but I think for certain people, this is a really cool use case. If you need a small form factor PC, then this is the best option for you. You're not really gonna be able to build something at this size that's very easy to do um, without spending a lot of money. So going with something from Mini's Forum is a good option to consider. And if you wanna pick this thing up, link down below. Probably be an affiliate link and it will help us out. But I'm very happy we got the chance to take a look at this very powerful mini computer. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toasterbros. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Hey, and if you guys are following us over on social media like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and stuff like that, you would see a sneak peek of things like this before it actually goes live on YouTube. I don't think we actually posted this one beforehand. Maybe I tweeted it out. How do you know? I tweeted it Did out. you tweet it out? I tweeted it out. Show me. All right, he's going to show me and then we'll right, leave. <laughs>